roll. Gonna get this roll. I'm gonna get this roll. You really shouldn't put so much pressure on yourself, Clover. I'm not putting pressure on myself. I'm psyching myself up. And I'm just looking out for my best friend. Yeah, practically everybody in the school's auditioning. Everybody who's anybody. Plus a few nobodies. What are you trying to say, Sam? I'm not good enough to play the poor orphan Cosette? Of course you are. In fact, you're the most dramatic person I know. But you learning all those lines? What? Starring in a play is about more than just memorizing lines, Sam. I mean, I wouldn't expect a bookworm like you to understand art. That's for true virtuosos like Picasso, Da Vinci, Madonna, and of course, me. <laughs> Next, please. Monsieur Vergen, what ill fortune to be poor with no family. Uh, I even had to uh, sell my car just to be able to get enough to eat. Thank you. That'll be all, Clover. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. I am so happy to be playing the role that I so richly deserve. I'll be signing autographs in the lunchroom this afternoon. Ah, uh, Clover, although that was an interesting interpretation of Les Mis, it's not exactly what we're looking for. Next! <laughs> Clover, aren't you getting a little carried away? It's just a silly play. A silly play? This is my career we're talking about. I mean, how could he not pick me? I have perfect hair, perfect teeth. Plus, I just love Paris. I'd like to see Mr. Tetley's teaching credentials. You know, Clover, you should be happy you didn't get this part. I mean, rehearsing over and over. Oh, Monsieur Vergeon, what huh? ill fortune to be poor with no family. Sounds like such a drag. That's it! That was brilliant, Samantha. You were born to play Cosette, and I won't take no for an answer. Uh, thanks a lot, Mr. Tetley, but Clover should really get this part. You know, she's a very talented actress, plus she has great teeth. See? But, Samantha, you've got the makings of a star. No, really, Clover's my girlfriend, and, and I... Perhaps even a Hollywood star. When do rehearsals start? When do rehearsals start? I can't believe you, you little traitor. It's not my fault I'm star material. Ugh. Cut it out, you guys. You're supposed to be friends. Since you girls are in such a talkative mood, perhaps one of you would like to tell the class what you think the most dramatic scene in Les Miserables is. Well, I, for one, think it's the scene in which Jean Valjean escapes through the Paris sewers. Greetings, my academic colleagues. Oh, you must be Percival, the Trabacistan ambassador's son. Indubitably. Oh, by the way, sir, I always felt it would be appropriate to discuss Les Miserables in the context of a major strain in 19th century literature emphasizing pauperization. Hmm, an interesting theory, Percival. You should do just fine on tomorrow's quiz. Quiz? What quiz? The quiz on the first ten chapters of Les Mis. That is, for those of you who didn't get a role in the play. <laughs> <laughs> I would, but now I have a quiz to study for. You know, ever since somebody stole my part in the play. How about you, Sam? Hmm? I have to go over my lines. You know what they say, the more practice, the more perfect. <sighs> I guess I'll go to one then. It's an international emergency. You see, the annual Nobel Prize Winners Conference is going on today. The world's top scholars are there. International emergency? Sounds more like an international snooze fest. Yeah, where can we not get tickets? <clears throat> As you can see on this hotel surveillance video, several prize winners have been mysteriously kidnapped. They must be found. Oh. Did I mention the conference is in Paris? Paris? <laughs> And now for the gadgets. This week we have steel cable launcher go-go boots, jetpack backpacks, infrared heat detector glasses, exploding lipstick, and last but not least, emergency propeller watches. I've been spring colors. 
And one more thing, ladies. Tomorrow, you'll be having a surprise quiz in biology. <gasps> Two quizzes in one day? That's totally unfair. Unfair for some of us. Couldn't you at least tell us what the quiz is on, Jer? Sorry, but it would be completely unethical for me to disclose that the test is covering the chapter on Cro-Magnon Man. <gasps> Oops. Uh -huh. Oh, would you look at the time? I've really got to run. Ciao! I hope this thing's on autopilot. <laughs> open for anything strange and try to blend in. Uh, excuse me, miss. Aren't you the one who wrote that article about the expansion of the universe? That's me, brains and beauty. And yourself, what have you written? Well, uh, my specialty is prehistoric man, uh, in particular, cro -Magnon. Can you believe it? This guy could actually help us on our biology quiz. Uh, uh, friends and, and, and colleagues, I've just found out that the specialist on the expansion of the universe has honored us with her presence. Uh, would you be so kind as to share your latest findings with us? <laughs> okay, um, actually, the universe is as easy as pie. It's like, um, one big shopping mall. Yeah, that's it. See, it starts out small. But the more business it does, the more it expands. So, no need to worry. By the way, did I tell you I just love Paris? I don't see anything. Me neither. It's like she vanished into thin air. Disaster. He's the foremost authority in 19th century French literature. Okay, this is officially weird. Weird would be an understatement, Sammy. Two people just got vacuumed into the ceiling like dust buddies. No, not the abductions, the people who got abducted. Um, you want to try that again in English, Miss Cosette? Think about it. Jerry tells us we'll be quizzed on Cro-Magnon Man in biology tomorrow, and the Cro-Magnon specialist gets kidnapped. We're also supposed to have a test on Les Miserables, and guess what? The expert on 19th century French literature just vanished. First of all, we aren't being tested on Les Miserables. Second of all, do you actually expect us to believe that there's a connection between these kidnappings and our quizzes in LA? That's exactly what I expect you to believe, Miss Sore Loser. Easy does it, girls. Look, we'll just ask Jerry for the subject of all our upcoming quizzes and then see if any of the prize winners at the conference are experts on those subjects. No way, absolutely not. I am not allowed to reveal quiz subjects to you girls. But this is different. It's for our mission. It could be a matter of life and, and someone being sucked into the ceiling. <sighs> well, when you put it that way. Your next quiz is in math class. The topic is Isaac Newton, but that's all I'm telling you. Since when do we study cookie designers in math class? Newton isn't a cookie designer, you dimwit. Who are you calling a dimwit, traitor? Hey, girls! Look, there's an expert on Isaac Newton right here in the conference catalog. have never been stabbed in the back by one of your best friends. Uh-huh, I knew it. You admit that Sam's one of your best friends. Huh? Hey, look at this. <laughs> we gotta get down there. Our expert's clearly the next in line.
Oh, well, look at the time. Gotta fly! anything out of that one. Oh, I can be very persuasive. You're lucky sample of the sewers. Otherwise, you would have been French toast. Wait a second. I'm getting a weak signal from Alex's comp powder. I'll patch it through. Help! What are you two waiting for? An invitation? I'm locking in on her location. Oh, my. It appears she's being held at 12118. Marmalade Street. But that's the house hmm? next door to mine. That's right. And according to Whoop Records, that's where the ambassador from Trebukistan and his son have been living for the past two weeks. Isn't that the fat-headed kid from Mr. Tetley's class? Yeah. We better get back to Beverly Hills. Farewell, Capery. <laughs> Nobel Prize winners. <gasps> huh? Here, we got all three of them, boss. Good. Bring them in. Hey, it's the big head freak from our school. Pi R squared times logarithm of ZY equals. It's like they're sucking the intelligence from the prize winners and putting it into his head. No wonder he's such a know-it-all. Mr. Ambassador. Ambassador? That's right, girls. And also soon the father of the most intelligent child in the world. My son will be a genius in no time. A star pupil in school. No one will dare pick on him the way they picked on me. So, let me get this straight. You kidnap those scholars just to suck out their brains and pump them into your son's head? Yes. And you think he won't get picked on? Hello? The guy's head is the size of a hot air balloon. <laughs> we'll see who gets the last laugh. He's gonna turn us into hamsters! Keen observation. 
mission. The hamster is really going to benefit from your intelligence. Forgetting something important. Some of us are exempt from tests. <laughs> Lucky thing there was almost no fluid left in the tube. You all right, girls? A little grossed out, but otherwise fine. I can't, I can't believe you just did that for me. You totally saved my life, Sam. Not to mention my outfit. Well, I wouldn't have done it for just anybody. Only for a best friend? Exactly. Sorry, I called you a thief and a traitor. No, I'm the one who should be sorry. I never should have accepted the roller coset. Oh. <gasps> oh no! It's time for our quiz on Lame is Rob! No! <laughs> Wait, did Beverly hurry? I forgot all about it! Heck, I don't know squat about Lame is Rob! Neither do I. What, what are, are we, we gonna, gonna do? do? Don't worry about it, girls. I'll tell you everything you need to know. After all, that's what best friends are for. Good, because we also need help cramming for our biology quiz on the chromags. Mm. Wow, who knew an artist like me could also excel at academics? Looks like we're all multi-talented. Speaking of which, what'd you guys decide to do about the play? It's simple. I'm gonna convince Mr. Tetley that Clover is the right actress for the part of Cosette. And I'm going to insist that he makes Sam my first understudy. Mr. Tetley, we need to talk to you right away. Yeah, it's about the part of Cosette. Shh, not now, girls. Oh, Monsieur Valjean, ah! what ill fortune to be poor with no family. That's it! That was... Brilliant, Mandy. You were born to play Cosette, and I won't take no for an answer. Huh? Mandy, you've got the makings of a star. Tell me something I don't know. 